Hi everyone, I'm Eva Yazari. I am the CEO of Beyond Capital Fund and the general partner of Beyond Capital Ventures. And today I am here with Aieko Angadia, the CEO and founder of Zeno, a goal-based investment platform based in Uganda. Hi Aieko, great to have you. Uh, excellent Eva, thank you for the excellent introduction. Excellent, great. So looking forward to diving more in, and hearing more from you. As you know, this is a short interview, a short video for our supporters and followers and investors to get to know you better. Tell us a little bit more about what motivated you specifically to start Zeno. Um, that's a, a long question, uh, long answer, but um, so the motivation just really started from an observation that people find it really difficult to fund uh, those financial obligations that occur sometime in the future. For example, retirement, child's education, or purchasing a home two, three, four years down the road. And so um, uh, people often end up either asking their relatives <laughs> where I live, uh, a lot of people depend on family and friends uh, or getting into so much debt, especially now that debt is so uh, easily accessible by these mobile, through these mobile apps. But also the hardworking people that are able to put away some money and could, instead of borrowing later in the future, could instead save gradually to be able to um, fund those financial obligations that occur in the future. So a lot of people didn't, didn't use to put away money, or if they did put away, they didn't use to invest it. And so a lot of them either uh, were unable to fund their obligations or put away money and got, um, got very little out of it because it wasn't invested, it wasn't growing, yet inflation was just running through it. So it was from this observation that people actually would uh, appreciate a way to conveniently put away money, to conveniently invest in order to meet a particular objective in the future. And so went through a process where, uh, how do you make that happen? And how do you make it happen at scale? So it was really to help people meet their future obligations. Uh, that's where it all started. And then everything else was running experiments to see whether the solution that we had come up with could actually work, and it did. It is so far. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, I, I think everybody around the world today can, can relate to inflation and understanding yeah. how there needs to be a mechanism for savings and investment in order to, as you say, meet goals around sending children to school or even retirement or purchasing a home. Um, and I think you've created an incredible tool um, for investors or savers to be able to do that. Um, Zeno was uh, one of our uh, seed round investments um, where we led the round in Beyond Capital Ventures and is also a part of the Beyond Capital Fund portfolio as well, just to give everybody that background. Um, maybe talk a little bit more about the impact that Zeno is having. Um, you mentioned the ability to save and you know catch up with inflation, but what other impacts is the business having? And feel free to go into you know, how you built out the platform as well, because I know your technology is proprietary. Yeah, so um, the, the first thing is uh, really just helping just one individual go through the planning phase, yeah? And so uh, typically, if you had money and you are in Europe or in the US and you had a problem that you needed to fund in the future, for example, retirement or child's education, you'd go and speak to your financial advisor if you had access to financial advisor. However, that's um, so it, it, uh, financial advisors are very difficult to find. Uh, especially on the continent. Uh, and so, um, but people still need to plan uh, whether they have, uh, are able to put away $100 every month or are able to put away $10,000 every month. <laughs> for those who can do that, they still need to be able to plan whatever the quantum. And so we started by just building a, a platform that replicates a conversation you would have with 
a financial advisor if you call them up and they were good enough to invite you to their office and say, you know what, I am able to put away $100 every month. I want it to go towards my child's education. Where should I put it? What should I invest in? Should I buy a two-year bond, a five-year bond, a 10-year bond, or a one-year T-bill, or a stock of this company, telecom company, or a stock of this bank? So what sorts of things would you naturally, um, um, be, would you be naturally required to tell a financial advisor? So first of all, before the financial advisor tells you, they would typically, you typically get some information uh, from you, which, uh, which information goes something like, uh, how long are you investing for? What's your investment knowledge? What are your attitudes towards um, uh, taking risk? That sort of information helps the financial advisor build a profile of you before making the recommendation for your specific case. So we built out that, but then uh, we realized in order for this to be useful, people needed to take action on the financial plan or investment plan that they've come up with. And so in order to take that action, you needed to invest this money in a group of funds. And so for example, so the plan, the plan is typically put 10% of your money in money markets, maybe 60% in bonds, 10% in domestic equities, and 20% in regional equities, a portfolio. However, to action on that portfolio, you needed the underlying funds for those portfolios. So we built out the second bit of our business as well, which is the underlying funds. We build a money market fund, a bond fund, domestic equity fund, regional equity funds to make two pieces of our business. So the first piece is the what is called in, in the industry a robo-advisor, the automated advice. And then the second bit is the actual underlying portfolios, uh, sort of what you'll find with Vanguard, Fidelity, BlackRock, ETC. But also in building those funds, we realize you actually need a system infrastructure to administer those funds in order to help the savers or the investors reach particular goals. So we built the third bit which is the transfer agency infrastructure or the fund administration infrastructure to that. And so this is how, so you start by solving one problem, you realize another one, you realize another, and there's actually a fourth one, which is the moving money easily from a person's bank account or mobile money account. We also build that infrastructure. So we've kept solving um, gradual problems, but all of it geared towards helping people First of all, access professional investment guidance, be able to act on that investment guidance in order to meet an objective. And then in, in, by doing so, we are impacting not just one individual, but every one other, every other individual that person is responsible for. For example, their children, their parents, their spouse. So that is the sort of impact, just helping people organize their finances in a structured way in order to help them meet their objectives. That's incredible to think about that problem from the holistic viewpoint. And you say, you know, we're solving a lot, that's entrepreneurship, you know, that's innovation <laughs> and, you know, finding a way to be able to solve all of those problems at once and holistically um, is something that we found really attractive about your business. Um, one other thing I just wanted to note is that when you talked about financial advisors, Zeno also has financial advisors that call customers, that make sure they're satisfied, that offer a place for your customers to ask critical questions. And yeah. what we've observed is that this kind of like end-to-end -end technology on the African continent does not work. People do want a human interaction as a part of that. Yeah. So I think it's a very smart part of your model as well. Um, maybe tell us the story of a customer, um, you know, and how they were able to find you and start working with Zeno. Uh, <laughs> I have many customers, but I will tell the story of our first customer. A lady, she was 52, she was about to retire and was worried had she, she was retiring in, in, in three years in Uganda, you retire at 55, it's a relatively, <laughs> and we have a relatively young population, only two and a half percent of our population is above 65, you won't believe this. But <laughs> yeah, so um, she was 52, uh, in three years, her contract was running out and she was scheduled for retirement. She was worried about, does she actually have enough? And she had always looked for a place where she can, 
put away a little bit, a, li a little extra money, uh, not risk it, but safely, but it should grow. She didn't really care about at what rate, as long as it grew a little bit, as long as that place wasn't a bank account where the monthly charges and you charge for the privilege of even checking the, the balance on your account. And so um, somebody referred that to us, uh, to me, and she called me to her office, sat down with her 20 minutes. Within 20 minutes, and I have to say, this was before we got our licenses to operate. Uh, so uh, at the time we had this conversation, the regulator told us the licenses would be ready within two weeks. And I was confident I was now meeting prospective customers, it is seen, as you can imagine. And so uh, I met her within 20 minutes. She said, you know what? I want to be the first customer of this platform. Please make me the first customer. The first time you launch it, I want be, to be the, because this is what I've been looking for. If I had this 20 years ago, I would be in a much better place. However, the licenses took longer than two weeks, but she called me each of these weeks. She called me after one week, after the second week, after the third week, after the fourth week, after, we only got her licenses five, six weeks later. And indeed, she was the first customer. We actually, I literally walked to our office to onboard her. Um, it, it, it failed, we failed on board <laughs> after walking there, but we onboarded her subsequently. And then um, she walked me to the next office to onboard another person. Three years later, which was last year, um, no, yeah, the year before last, she retired. And believe this or not, she came to our office for the first time. I have a picture to prove this. <laughs> she said, you and your company have changed my life. The way, it, what is even quite impressive about her is the way she used to deposit money on her account. In Uganda, there is no easy way to transfer money from a bank account to another subscription service. So she would literally walk and draw money from her bank account and then walk to our custodian bank and deposit the physical cash. And she did it religiously for uh, the three years she was a customer. And when she retired, she hasn't drawn down that money yet. She's still, <laughs> in fact, occasionally she sends us a check. So that's one interesting customer story we are able to help reach their objective, but continue to be, to have a relationship with us even after that. That's incredible. What a great example and, and start to product market fit. Um, yes. so tell me, what is the long-term vision of Zeno? Where do you see the company in five years? Um, so for me, really, um, it is first to directly, and, and for me, um, I would say five years and 10 years, to directly, uh, allow me to stretch it to 10 years, to directly impact and when I say directly impact, to directly be able to advise, help uh, and help them uh, act on the advice, 20 million people on the continent. And so our thesis internally is every individual that we help normally is responsible for four more people. Those four more people would typically be one or two children, whether or not they're their own biological children in Africa, uh, that happens a lot. Uh, a spouse and a parent, yeah? And so when you add that up, each person that we help sort of straighten their finances, help them to save, help them to fund. Part of it comes from um, a, a wish that if our parents had this kind of guidance and were able to save religiously and invest in saving religion, we would be in a much better place. So if we can help organize that capital for each individual and we are able to reach directly 20 million, we would have impacted uh, the lives of um, five times that number of people. So a hundred million people in, in terms of impact. That's what our objective is. Great. Incredible. I mean, just the ability to leverage technology and reach large groups of people and their families and have a strong impact is something that we really appreciate about it, being an emerging markets investor. Um, is this the and also being an investor that's providing access to need to haves, of which fintech is one of those important sectors. So, last question for you 
is how did we as investors in your company help you reach your goals to grow and scale? Or how will we as investors, mm-hmm. we only invested a couple of weeks ago, assist Zeno in reaching its long-term goals? Yeah, so first of all, I have to commend you for investing in a market like this. <laughs> it's uh, everyone is uh, finding it really difficult, but there are gems still around. And um, we are one of those um, really shining gems, even if we say it ourselves. And I commend you for um, just maintaining that conviction which you developed long before the market turned or is understanding. And um, so the capital that we're raising right now is one to uh, broaden access, reach a lot more customers within our current market, which is Uganda, but deepen access, deepen the number of things that people can use our platform for, but also broaden access in terms of reaching a second market in this time. In, the, in this case, uh, we reaching a second market, um, uh, which we have defined internally, but those are the objectives. We want to uh, accelerate our growth within the current market and also open up in a second market and set up shop. That's really what this round that you have led, being so kind enough to lead, is going to help us with. Incredible. Last question, um, which has come out of our discussion today is we're recording this in June of 2022 at a time where the markets are at an inflection point. Um, you know, Global markets are declining, we have inflationary concerns and frankly, just inflation. How is that? You're an investment manager, you know, that's your background. You're also a quantitative economist and math, you're kind of a quantitative mathematician. Um, how is this, how, what is your view of the markets and how will it impact Zeno? Yeah, so my view of the market is uh, you actually really have to be um, we sent out a, a, a newsletter to our clients two days ago. Uh, part of it is uh, the markets will always behave how they want. <laughs> you have no control of the market. All you have control over is your finances, the decisions you make around those finances. And the markets will always turn. Uh, you investing over a 10-year period, there will be a difficult period. Um, sometimes you will take a break, sometimes you will sit, sit out the storm, but the market will always be there. So it just really depends on how you use it and how you position. Are you deeply involved in a particular sector? Maybe you have to broaden it a little bit. But particularly for our investors in Uganda, um, the markets have it, it, within the East African region haven't been as uh, roiled as you would find on Wall Street or in the city of London or in Singapore, um, Beijing. And so there is, though inflation has accelerated, but (laughs) in order to stay ahead of inflation, you still need to invest. If you just sit down on your hands, you probably, the inflation will burn through uh, that uh, cash pile like a, a, a hot knife through butter. And so um, it is really important to, to be a bit, um, from an investor's perspective, to be selective um, in terms of the quality of um, uh, positions that you take, uh, to have a long-term perspective. It is not, um, you're not going to measure success by what happens this quarter or next quarter, even the next one year. The next one year is going to be very difficult. But um, you still have to stay in the market in some sense in order to actually get your money to grow. And so um, I am a fundamental believer, an optimist. You can't be an investor if you're not an optimist. (laughs) You'd be an insurer. (laughs) You take out insurance against everything. Uh, And so um, you have to select carefully, select quality, maybe reduce the risk um, a a little bit, but uh, fundamentally, if you have even a relatively longer time horizon, take the risk. Um, And of course, many assets have been repriced to lower levels now. There's no better time to enter the market than now, but again, it just depends on your circumstances as well. Great points. 
I wholeheartedly agree, but I'm also an optimist and a long-term investor. So I agree with that approach. Aiko, it's been great to spend this time with you and to share your work and to share the company that you've built with our supporters and our investors. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Sounds good.